I represent my 23 classmates who all feel that things need changing. In our research, we found something that we think would help us engage more in your lessons. So we put this tutorial together with the intention of helping you. There are two platforms for making a digital escape room that we want to demonstrate. Office Forms is great because our district already uses it. Making an escape room through it is pretty simple. All you have to do is when you go to your 365 drive, go into forms, click on new quiz. First, give it a title. Underneath where it asks you to write a description, you could put in the scenario for what this whole escape room is about. Then when you wanna add a new question for us to answer, you can put in a new section where you describe what's happening. And you can also give us the clues that you're using. You can also put in a hyperlink in this section. You can also add a video by clicking on the image thing here, and you can put in a picture or a video. You can either look it up, you could bring it in from your OneDrive, or you could upload it from the actual desktop. Then when you wanna add a question for us to answer, you just have to decide what kind of question it's going to be. Write out what the question is. And then write your answer choices. Leave multiple answers off so that we can't give multiple correct answers and then turn on required. When you get to the three dots, I would suggest you shuffle the options and make sure that you click the check mark so that you know which answer is correct. That's all you have to do. Then you just add another new section. And then again, tell us the scenario and give us the clue. Once again, you can add a link, you can add images or you can add videos and then put in a new box again. If you want us to do a short answer instead of multiple choice, you just click add answer, hit required, and that's it. Once you are finished with all of it, in preview mode, you can see what it's going to look like. So as you can see in the first new section, we have our new escape room and here would be where you described the scenario for us. Then you have your new section where you give us our first clue. We click our answer choice and hit next. Then there's the second one. If we type the wrong thing, it'll tell us, it'll still let us go on, but it'll just be that we're done. <clears throat> the other platform we want to show you is Google Forms. This is slightly easier, but not that different from Microsoft. If you have a Google account, you just go to your drive, click new. And if you've never done a form before, you go to more. 
And in the drop down menu, you look for forms. Give it a name. And then again, give us the description for the scenario. Then in order to add in our first clue, you click this thing that looks like an equal sign at the bottom of your menu. This will be your first section. Give us the clue and scenario. And if you would like, you can add in an image or a video, or you can just put in a link to a site <clears throat> directly from this section. Then when you go to your questions, you can do multiple choice again. Make sure you hit required. And then add a description. where you give a little hint about what is required in the question. And then also shuffle up the option order again. And then go to section based on answer means that if they get it correct, they'll go to the next section, but if they get it wrong, so we said option two was incorrect, we could just make them go back to the previous section. So they cannot move on until they've answered it correctly. Once you have gotten the question the way you want it, you hit add a new section. And just like before, you title it, give the scenario and the clue. Again, with a video or a picture or by putting a link in. And then to add a question, you're going to hit the circle with the plus at the top of the menu. If you wanted to do a short answer, you turn on required. And then you have to say description and response validation. The description is where you put down the important things like what capitalization is required, spacing, punctuation, anything like that. So if I were to give you a two word answer where I want everything to be all in caps locks, I would write your answer should two words all in now it gives you a bunch of different options for what the short answer is. You could make them write out a number or you could give them text. And then I would suggest you do contains and write down exactly what the answer should be. If they get it wrong, you can even put in a little um, note about trying again. Just like before, if you click on the eye at the top, you can preview what it's going to look like. All right, so if I said option two was correct, it will not let me go on to the next thing until I've chosen the correct answer. So then if I choose option one and hit next, it'll take me to the next thing. So then if I said truth, hit submit, it's all done. If I had done it incorrectly, it would not have let me go that far. Now, 
when you're getting ready to actually uh, set this up, you're going to go into settings, make it a quiz. You don't need to worry about any of these things down here, but just make sure that it's a quiz, okay? You never actually have to worry about the point values or anything like that. You have 48 hours to develop an escape room that we can do in class next week. Failure to comply with our demands will result in a full period of us doing TikTok videos and the water bottle flip challenge. Good luck.